things that I've just uh, posted from outside. Uh, it's kind of cold here. We got, I don't know, two, three inches of snow, and uh, it's supposed to get warmer today, so I suppose it'll start to melt off. But yeah, I don't like this time of year. I'm not a cold weather person. It's about 40 degrees in the shop here. I got the wood stove going, and it's starting to build up heat. But oh boy, this is the early part of the day, is always the fun part. So, uh, Anyway, today I'm going to go over the shop modifications that I've been making uh, over the past couple of weeks or few weeks. Um, I put in dust collection. Uh, I am going to modify the bandsaw uh, to, uh, to cut. I have a, a bit larger cut capacity. Um, what else have I done? Jeez. Oh, I got a new sanding station. Uh, I'll show you that. And. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I spent a little bit of money on some sanders. That was nice. Uh, on a lot of things, actually, between the uh, dust collection and the, and the bandsaw modifications I'm going to make. Uh, yeah, I, I spent a few bucks. But, you know, it's all in the, in the name of good woodworking, right? So uh, give me a second to get kind of set up here, and I'll bring you back in, OK? Okay, so I made uh, the first two parts of the modification uh, for the Ryobi bandsaw here. And uh, I'm going to pull the camera off the tripod for a second to show you. Where's the latch? There it is. Okay, so first thing I did was you might notice the yellow wire running up to the ceiling. I had to crawl around in the attic and run a 220 outlet because I'm going to put 220 motor on it, or over here anyway. And then this is the dust collection port, which I'll get to later on. I'll show you all about that. And I'm going to put dual dust collection on it. So now I'm going to show you how to actually modify a Ryobi bandsaw, a nine inch Ryobi bandsaw, to cut much larger stuff. Okay? So first, of course, you can't have it plugged in. But This is the first step of it, is just pull out the way. And the second step. Is to install a much larger bandsaw. Because there is no way to modify a Ryobi bandsaw to be bigger. <laughs> So here's uh, the back side of it after we got it all hooked up. Uh, let me pan you down a bit here. There we go. So I got collector hose coming over here and I had to put a screw, uh, drill a hole there and put a screw in it because it just kept falling off. The, the plastic connector didn't grab that metal um, port very well. So fix that with a, with a sheet metal screw. And then the bottom dust port, it's hooked into this tube into a Y. There's a wastegate on the other side there, so I can just step over there and pop the wastegate open and go. And then uh, my 220 outlet, and uh, I'm like, wow, this is nice. I mean, here, let's uh, I'll put you back up to the blade here. Oh, hell, let's go over to the other side. Whee! That was a quick tour of the shop now, wasn't it? Okay, so this is the other side of it. You see, there we go. Uh, that light over there is going to fit in. So, this is the front side. Oh, pan down all the way. There we go. Boom. So, got my on off switch. Blade. I'm going to lower that down before I actually fire it up. I'm not actually cutting anything, I'm just going to show you how it runs. Not as bad as a planer, though, you got to admit. So, this thing runs relatively quiet. I kind of like that. 
right now the only blade I've got is the one that came with it. I've got three more coming. I got a an eighth inch, quarter inch, and a one inch, and then this is a half inch that's on here. I'll probably get me a three eighths also, but uh, yeah. So the whole thing that was going on with me making modifications in the shop was getting set up to have one of these. Um, this is the type of saw that you really don't or shouldn't, I should say, run it without dust collection because it can build up in the bottom and actually get trapped. If you build it up too much, it'll actually get trapped between the blade and the uh, tire and it can break the blade or ruin it, embed into the neoprene on the tire or whatever. Um, but this is a 17 inch wheel running 131 and a half inch uh, blades. I mean, it's pretty darn slick. Got a tension engage here. Uh, this is the tension for the, uh, the uh, adjust the tension for the blade. And then there's a quick release on the back which lets you drop it so you can change the blade. And then. Pan you down again. There's the 17 inch wheel there, and then this is the pulleys on this. It has a, a dual pulley here and down here, so you get two two speeds. Um, but like I was saying, you can actually build up dust in this thing, things. I've seen people open them up and have dust all the way up into the rim, and that's why I was like, no, I'm not even going to take that chance, and we'll set up a dust collector. So I had this. Uh, old two horsepower dust collector sitting around for, oh geez, I must have got that thing 10 years ago. Uh, used it in my old shop a few times, but never actually got it, uh, never actually got it fully set up the way I wanted with the um, cyclone and all that stuff. And then I started seeing these videos of these do guys doing the theme collector, uh, where it comes in and circles around, there's a slot in the bottom board and a tube that goes up out the top. And so, I took the collar from the original dust collector and made a thing collector out of it and took a plastic 55 gallon drum and cut a hole in the top that that collar would fit into and then uh, attached it to that um, and then left a little bit of the top of the barrel stick down, I don't know, maybe six inches or so. I'll, I'll take the camera in there and show you a little bit here. Um, and then took the another barrel and cut the top off of it. That sits down on it so it seals up nice and neat, and that's the uh, catch barrel. Uh, and then I took that two horsepower motor, mounted on the wall, got the uh, remote switch uh, from one of the remote switches from Grizzly. They carry several. And there it is. I don't know if you can hear that or not. So, the Collector is actually in the next room over. We've got like a storage room on the side of the shop, and uh, it's actually it was the old garage, and then this guy was built. And it was the new garage, and now it's really not a garage. It's a shop. <laughs> uh, Dad does get his van in here, so that's why the saw is here. There's enough space over here for the van. Um, so let me. Uh, Take the camera off the tripod again and we will. So, yep, there you see what I'm doing. So, the dust collector is right on the other side of this wall. All right, this is the storage room through that little break there. We got kind of a curtain hung up to keep the heat in here. But uh, the main trunk runs diagonally across the shop all the way over to. Uh, the chop box over there because that's the tool that is the farthest away from it. So we ran the main trunk line that way. You got a two and a half inch branch off that goes down to the sliding compound miter saw. And then there's a branch here which is the one that goes over to the new band saw. Plus it feeds the planer, the drum sander, um, and the uh, table saw. And then there's a joiner right here that we can unplug the hose from and flip it over there for it. And you got Dad's lathe here, and he's got his drop on short extension off the main trunk. And then there's the branch going over to my lathe. And the camera crane and all the good stuff that goes on over here, which you guys have been watching for a year now. 
All right, so let's go see what's on the other side of that, right? <clears throat> so you'll have to pardon the mess. This side is not well kept. It's just kind of stacked full of shit, literally. All right, so up here is the motor. And I know I don't have very good lighting in here, so you'll have to forgive me on that. But there's the motor. This is the theme collector I built with the actual collar from the old dust collector. And then this the uh, the catch barrel. And it goes up this flex pipe into the metal and uh, into through the wall and into the main pipe. Now it's five inches here, and on the other side of the wall it turns into a four inch. Uh, and it's PVC, and all the PVC is wired back to this, which is wired into the motor or to the grounded to the motor, so that we don't have a shocking experience. And then this is my homemade filter. I built a plywood box, and there's two 24 by 24 uh, two inch wide. Uh, or thick, whatever you want to call it, uh, filters on it, and it puts out like the, the air just kind of flows out of it. And I haven't haven't had to change the filters on it yet, but it's uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't spit out a whole lot of dust anyway. Um, the Thin Collector is very very uh, efficient. Uh, I really like that style. That's why I went with that. And I haven't actually checked inside of it in a couple days. Dad's been out here working. Well, that's a lot easier to do with two hands because you got to kind of hold the bottom in, pull up on the top. But you can see the, the color difference there is where the two barrels are, where one side's hooked onto the other and it puts in there. So I didn't make a see through theme collector. I had this, so it was really simple to do. Uh, so I stayed with that. There's an MDF platter in the bottom of that and, uh, and it goes up into the blower, out of the blower, through the five inch output into the box here and then the top of the filter box here actually has two screws you can take those out and the whole top comes off and you can change filters and these filters are actually from work they uh, from where I work the big AC's on the rooftop they change the filters out whether they need them or not so I take all the fairly clean ones and then reuse them and there's the 41 1941 well hello focus this is the 1941, uh, what is it, Powercraft, Power yeah, that we modified. This gets used now and then, not very often. So, and then Dad's lathe, and again, that drop, which he's got a uh, gate in the middle of his drop. I have a gate at the end of my drop. So, anyway, yeah, we've been busy little guys with all these mods, but now that that is done, Hopefully I will soon be making uh, new videos of my projects. And you guys can uh, hopefully enjoy that. So, anybody need a 9 inch Ryobi bandsaw? So I almost forgot, I have, a, uh, have the sander station too. A little, uh, it's not much, but <clears throat> does a trick. Got a... Uh, uh, orbital spindle sander and then uh, just a little belt disc combo it's a small one but it'll do for now it'll do for now and then that all the uh, hose that hooks onto the slider also reaches all of them so I can whoop well when it stays connected I'm having a heck of a time keeping hoses connected aren't I anyway uh, yeah I had forgotten about that and had to put that in there. So, there you go, sander station. Get ready for some fun stuff, guys. Bye.